Hi, Jen. We just had a great conversation offline. Yes, we did. Elliot, nice to yeah. meet you. Nice to meet you. One Jew to another. You know? <laughs> that, that's always the connection when you find it, right? A hundred percent. You're part of the tribe. I feel like I've known you for a hundred years already. Yes. As soon as uh, I don't know why I didn't put it together. And but then as soon as I saw your last name, I was like, oh, Elliot, what the fuck? <laughs> How did you not? I was going to say when you asked me if I was Jewish, I was like, well, I mean, it's pretty obvious in the last name just in itself, right? For sure. Um, so, Jen, uh, you are someone who I have been quietly and slowly following for, for years. Um, I don't know even what the initial spark was. that I think it's when I first started this online journey of mine of, of going down this hole, this, you know, this rabbit hole of, of, of what it is. Um, and I worked with a lady named Erin Weed who uh, I don't I don't think you know her, but she told me to check you out. And I was like, oh, all right. I checked you out. And then, uh, yeah, so it, it was just that. So when you popped on my up on my list, like I have a team that sends me a list. I was like, oh, fuck. Yeah, I was I'm really so excited. Glad. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Erin. Erin, who does she, where, who's Erin anyway? Is she a friend of yours? Just a girl? So she's somebody who I got hooked up with. Um, to like maybe do some public speaking who I'm now finally doing public speaking with, but she was like, where I think you'll be best Elliot is this podcasting realm and like maybe a book, you know, but really the podcast, because uh, I kind of say it, how I feel it. And sometimes, you know, like, you know, that, it, you know, podcasting is good for that. So it could be definitely it depends you on how much be careful these days, man, right? because yeah. all that cancel culture, you gotta be super, super careful now, which yeah. I don't love, you know, I love the fact I like much more free form when you can say and feel, uh, and do, you know, basically speak openly and probably on your, maybe on your podcast, that's, we can do that. So I'm happy. I, I do, you know, I try to my best, uh, you know, I try not to get myself in too much trouble because, I think only Dave Chappelle and Joe Rogan are uncancelable. I think everyone else is very cancelable. Um, so uh, I'm trying Joe not Rogan to. Rogan even came close, though, for some crazy reason. He got close, but but no. But it, yeah. well, he, he can't get canceled, Jen. He, even, even if they canceled him, he's big enough. He could go start his own platform. That no way. I, I totally agree with you. He's like, no his, he's like a media entity in and out of itself. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I saw like numbers that like, He's like the equivalent of like having the, the accumulation of like what, like five CNNs or it's something five, like that. If you add, if you add up all of the major news networks, they're half of what his one is Isn't that by itself. Crazy? Mm -hmm. But I it's also know. dangerous. I know Joe, right? You know, yeah. Yeah, I was say because of UFC. Yeah, it's it's dangerous too, though, because Joe is not an expert, right? And he gets his treated, opinion. His, yeah, his opinion. And he smokes weed and gets high. And does podcasts and he's a comedian but everyone takes his word like it's god like, like it's gospel yeah and i'm like guys you know like stop it don't do that with him he and like and so that's it's hard for him now i think he's really just realizing but you know what though like it's not i mean in my opinion he started this podcast to have a free place to have conversations with his buddies and friends mm -hmm. and it, it grew way beyond anything he expected and a lot of the things he says, I tend to agree with, to be honest with you. Um, but uh, I agree. Like, I, I, well, I think it's it's kind of one of these things where, yeah, you have to be careful because you're right. He is not an expert. But if you're going to him thinking that he is an expert, then you have to kind of get your head examined, right? You're going to kick everything with a grain of salt. But at the same time, at what point does the person who's putting out the information have to realize that they're having a major influence. Like for me in my schools, for example, right? Like I'm the leader of the schools, right? I'm at the top with my other business partner. Uh, my, you get held just naturally, right? Okay. On put on this pedestal because of what you've accomplished in the school and what it does for people. And then they hear your word is something. Yeah, yeah. That it's not, I'm just a human being, right? Like I'm just a human. I'm going to mess up. You mess up. We all do. But but people don't do that really well right now. None of us do, right? Like none of us do. So how are you navigating this this online space that that you're in? You know, it's, been, it's interesting. Like you, that was never. That's it's not my core business, right? Like we're saying, go well, offline. We're not. I'm not an internet marketer. You're not an internet marketer. Right. Uh, number one. Um, and so you know, I I that and on that side on that side, I'm lousy. In terms of the speaking my, you know, speaking honestly and authentically, I don't know any other way. So I just, 
So you get yourself in trouble like me. I, I mean, I, I mean, yeah. the truth is like, I think that's where like common sense kind of comes in play. You know what I mean? Like I'm, I think I'm like at least a little savvy to know what's happened to other people, but at the same time, I don't like to have that. Then everything becomes very like, uh, compar- everything becomes very like wonder bread and perfect and PC. And, and then like, you're not really having any like real, like connection and conversation so for me I either stay away from certain topics so I don't even get myself into that like boiling water Mm -hmm. but at the same time I mean I just have to be I I just I am me and it is I really do take on the idea and approach like either you know you you can agree with me you don't have to agree with me but this is my my opinion I'm not going to like I'm not going to modify myself to such a point where I'm so watered down and diluted to where I feel it's just I what's the point well, that's this thing that everybody runs into, right? Is you're trying to be for everyone and then you end up being for no one. Yeah, you can't be for, right? I mean, exactly. And I'm very much like an acquired taste in general, in real life. Um, and so I just feel like that is exactly true. When you try to be someone for everybody, and that's what the companies and brands and everyone, you get, you're much more successful when you have a niche market and you tailor, you know, you're not tailored, but you have, you just, you, you kind of like, don't try to focus to be a, a, a people pleaser for everyone because you just become a, a, ple- a pleaser or people pleaser for nobody. I liked how you said uh, you're an acquired taste. My wife said from very early on, she's like, you're a fucking fungus. Yeah. You know? And then, like you just grow on people and anybody yeah. who, anybody who likes me off the bat, it, it never works out. Like, like it, it, it fizzles. Yeah, 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 yeah. But everyone who, everyone who's like, I don't know about that motherfucker. It's like the, we we grow, you know, we grow. Hundred percent. I actually think that's kind of a true a truism in life, right? Like for me too. It's like the people I usually like really have an instant connection with right away. It usually does fizzle fast, and then mm-hmm. like the the ones that kind of are like a slow build are usually the ones that have longevity. Got it. Yeah. I don't, I don't know why, but yes. I mean, some people start out fucking hating me. Like every, my friend, What's my hate though. You don't seem like you have anything really to hate about you. Although I don't, really, although you seem to I be, haven't coached you have ADD because you. you're moving around a lot in your chair. Yeah, no, I don't have ADD, but I, I move around a lot. Um, uh, okay. I haven't coached you yet. And when I like, like when I coach you, I'm very de- for athletics, for martial arts, I'm very demanding. Good. Can you yeah. come to LA? I mean, how do you ever come here? Yeah, I come, I come a bunch, but I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll have a coffee. We'll do some martial arts and I'm going to find you a good spot too. So I would love um, that. I didn't know that you even, you, you were such a maven in this space. Yeah. It's been my whole life, you know, since I was six years old, I, I'm not good at, I'm, I can make some food. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think I'm a decent dad and then I do martial arts and that's the, that's it. Amazing. So, how, uh, how many kids do you have? I have two, two boys. How about you? A, a boy and a girl. How old are your kids? Uh, 12 and eight, almost nine. Oh, wow. Okay. I have a nine-year-old that turned nine and I have a girl that just turned seven a couple weeks ago. Got it. All right. Yeah. Um. So I see this habits and hustle behind you. Tell me about habits and hustle. Yeah, barely. Well, habits and hustle is my podcast just, okay. and I do it in partnership with entrepreneur. And it really is about just like the habits and hustle of the most successful people that we have, like you know, in, in the world. And it could be in any field or any, in any uh, area, someone who's a disruptor, someone who's super fascinating, who's really kind of, and we kind of go, we go, we dig deep into their, into their story and what are the habits and the routines that either keep them on point and keep them and made them as productive and resilient as possible and what they've done and what they do now. I think so. This is all of it, right? Like, it's just that it's, it's the habits and the routines that make you stick in the game long enough that you actually get that things done because most people just quit too soon. Yeah. Or they they don't have, they don't have the, they haven't learned about the resilience and the, and the work that takes place to have to be super successful. And a lot of times it's like a lot of it's rinse and repeat, right? Like a lot of it's like doing the inane things that you don't want to do over and over and over again uh that kind of get you to that to that uh success precipice and they're very small right they're not these like grandiose things like oh my god tomorrow when i get this done i'm gonna have 10 million dollars no you won't yeah you know, it's, i mean it's i don't believe small in day anything. in and day out i don't think that there's many things as an overnight success it's like an iceberg right people only see the tippy top they don't see all the stuff underneath mm-hmm. and 
Um, and that could be with anybody. That could be with any any level of true success. And it doesn't have to. It's not. It's not only related to one genre or industry or professional. It's in personal everything. Personal life, professional life, anything that requires uh, anything that you to be successful in anything. I think it requires a lot of like work, a lot of like repetition, a lot of uh, resilience. And those things are skills that are built over time too. It's not, you don't have to be born that way to, to get into that mindset. It, you have to work at it. How did you get into this? Which part? This habits, like just this, this whole like entrepreneurial thing. Well, I think of all, I think that again, it's been like a, about building the skill for it. Right. So I um, naturally, I think I was always very curious as a kid and I've done a lot of pivots in my career. Fitness is just one of the pivots. Uh, I was in sports, I was in the music world. And when the music world was basically, it basically collapsed and I was trying to figure out what to do. I was here on a worker's visa, I'm Canadian. So I was here in LA on a worker's visa. And I was like, I always loved fitness. I always loved health. Let Hold on, stop for a sec. When you say the music industry collapsed, when did the music industry collapse? Well, when I say collapse, let me just give you some backstory, yeah. right? Uh, I was working as a, I was working in marketing for a record label. Okay. And it was like really early 2001 type of thing. And I was really fast tracking. I was in, I was doing very well in the marketing space. I was young and I was really doing well. However, it was when all the items, it was right. It was before iTunes and oh, it, was it was the well, whole Napster like, thing. Napster. Napster. And yeah. Things. And, the, and, and technology became a huge, huge element in how the music industry was going. It wasn't about the same things that it used to be. So there's a lot of shifts and my job was becoming much more about like online marketing campaigns, which we talked about earlier is not my strength. I don't love, I'm like technically not very savvy even 18 years later. Um, and it's not my passion. So I love much more connecting people, thinking, vision, uh, execution in real life, in real time. So I just decided to leave that world. And I decided to get my training and I, tr I, tr I decided to become a personal trainer just until I figure out my next move. And were you that married like at this time? Point. So no kids, no, but were no, you married? No, no. I, was, okay. I was super, I was really young and um, I was, no, I wasn't married. I was on a worker's visa. I was okay. with Sony. So you can't just come to, you know, they, they sponsored me. So I can't just like move to a country and just work like regular. So that was me becoming a trainer was a way for me to make money on the side kind of deal, you know, right, right. until I figure out my next move. But while I was doing it, I think I realized that I had all these relationships, obviously in the music world. I still loved music. I really loved fitness, but like, I didn't want to be a trainer, an hourly trainer. So I figured what I could do is maybe marry the two. How do I, I was like, how can I take my transferable skills that I learned and know and the context and network I have from the music world and marry it with fitness. So then I created a job title for myself and pitch and, and, and a job as being like a, a label trainer, like a personal trainer for record labels. And I pitched myself to the head of one of these labels that I had a relationship with. And I said, listen, give me a chance and I will give me this, pay me a retainer. So I'm not, so people show up or not, I'm not, I'm not capped by my, by someone else's, like, I'm not going to let my destiny be controlled by somebody else necessarily in that way. Because trainers get paid a lot of times through like an hourly mm -hmm. job. And I pitched myself, I said, I know how the marketing budget works. I know how talent work. I can train people for music videos or for when they go on tour, um, give me a shot. And the guy was very confused, but he gave me a shot. Um, and one label I was training turned into two, three, four. And that's how I kind of started in the, in the fitness space. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a planned thing. It was kind of on the fly as I was doing it. I decided that that's what I wanted to do. And I created my own opportunity. So like there was no such thing at, that, at the time to do that. But in life, and this is a, a big thing that I really believe in, I believe that you've got to create your own luck and you've got to create your own opportunity to have luck. 
And that's what I did. And so uh, that took me and ricocheted into a whole other trajectory of career that I never even thought was even a possibility. To me, I thought like doing fitness was like a hobby, not something I could create a career. But then I, you know, I wrote books, I started companies, I sold the companies. And one, so that one action, that actionable step led me to the next. It was a domino effect. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, that's what I really believe that people need to do. They got to think out of the box and they got to create their own opportunity. And what do they say? Like the first 50,000 or the first 100,000 is always the hardest to make, right? It like, absolutely is. Like that like, first, that first step is the hardest one to take that, you know, the first hundred that you have to do. But once you get it going, I believe that everything in life is about momentum, right? That's why action is so important. The second you stop, that's why people who are in a job are usually the people who get the, get, get offers for a new job, right? Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. always better to find a new job when you have a job already. Right. It's, it's often easier to meet new boys or girls when you when you're already taken it's just it's like Murphy's <laughs> law you know what I mean? yeah. nobody wants you it's like the groucho marks nobody wants you uh unless you have somebody you know unless uh -huh. you have are unavailable right, right? the thrill then, of the chase yeah it's such a weird thing and, and then it just starts to go and then you start to make more and more relationships and then and then you get all these opportunities it's a very weird thing it's just that it's just that going is very hard because you have to do this hustle and habits kind of like as you as you as the name of your podcast almost like you you have to do it without any return and that can be so hard for people sometimes it, it can be but the, the podcast though is like an iteration years and years later, right? Mm -hmm. Like, podcasts yeah, I'm just are, using it as a generalization yeah. what, as like what people yeah. have to do. Exactly. But I, the, the, the start or the stop is always in the start, mm -hmm. right? So people have to know that they should be making realistic goals for themselves, mm -hmm. right? And having a goal, you know, no dream is ever fulfilled unless you have goals for it, right? It's only a dream unless, unless you have a plan or a goal in mind. Else because it stays a dream. So you have to have like somewhat of an idea of what you're trying to accomplish. And then you have to go after it. You have to act on it. You can't just think about it and daydream about it, but there has to be action. Even if it's like really, really small. People talk all the time about these like tiny steps. And it's mm -hmm. but it's the truth, right? Like even if you do something, even a little, little something is always better than nothing because it yeah. gets you moving. I, I'm, I just started using this thing called the intention journal uh, it's by this guy named Brandon Beardy. He's a real estate guy, but, and I really like it because it makes me write down the smallest little step that I have to take today. And every day I have to go in this journal and I have to write down the smallest thing that I have to do today. And it's so easy. Like, there's no way I'm going to miss it. And if you just do it, like, man, I, I, by the end of the week, I've accomplished six small steps. Well, you know what I think is also something that we should point out is people like you or me who already seem to have their habits kind of like, mm -hmm. they're like, lock, like, kind of like locked in and like routines, like that to us, like it's second nature for people who are just starting or don't even know where to start. That's really where it's really hard, right? Because they don't have like, uh, a fitness routine, a nutrition, you know, plan, you know, like I, I really believe the first step in a lot of this stuff is working out every morning. I think it does so much for your mental state and mental health and your focus that, and confidence that it really does allow you to do something that to take that next step. So like, I, I do think that, uh, Everyone has to start somewhere. And that's why I think when they do that, it makes a big difference. Uh, and that's why I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I agree with you. I think a whole morning routine is very important because you start winning, you know, with exercise included. I think you, you start like winning. The, the priority because A, you start winning right away. I think a nightly routine is, is actually even more important than a morning routine because if okay. you don't if you don't sleep properly and don't get your ducks in a row to have that morning routine if you're not like set to have that morning routine it won't happen so like what i mean by that is like make sure that you're getting like enough quality sleep make sure that you have your your workout clothes like right beside your bed so you just roll right into them you don't even think about it 
you know what I mean? So like you're, you're done. So when the morning comes, you already know what you're going to do. Um, and like I said, people underestimate the power of fitness. They think, oh, you know, you know it's just, I, I don't have time for it, but I don't help people ha don't have the time for it because it gives you so much more energy and productivity for that day uh, that it really can make a difference between uh, like good to great or like kind of successful to really successful because it, those, those habits bleed into all these other things that you do. What do you say to people who uh, maybe they're a little ashamed, maybe they don't know how, maybe, you know, like how do they get started? with this fitness morning thing, you know, like other, because, you know, they don't, they're, they're too scared to go to a gym. They're like all, all of that stuff. And maybe they don't have the money for a personal trainer. So where do they start? I mean, you know, this better than anybody that, uh, you don't need a, you don't need a trainer and you don't need a gym. These are, these are kind of like accoutrements, you know, my entire brand was built on the company I first started called No Gym Required, because I believe that you don't need any of the fans who bells and whistles. People think that there's a magic pill or there's a, a magic trick. Really, it's basics. You can you can exercise in your house in the morning by doing it doesn't have to be a long, crazy workout. You can do basic squats, lunges and, you know, planks. But I'm going to tell you something. In today's time now, especially with social media and the Zooms and YouTube, there's so many workouts that are available for free in every modality. You can find, you can find martial arts, I mean, you do. You can find Pilates, you can find HIIT training, you can find ab workouts, lower body workouts. You can try a ton of stuff and that's where you start. You start by trying as much shit as possible to know what you actually enjoy to do. Because at the end of the day, if you don't like it, you're not going to do it. So if I said to you, Ellie, you know what? I think people can, they should go for a jog for 30 minutes. Yeah. But if you hate jogging, you're not going to do it. You'll and never get me to do it. You'll never, you'll never do it. Right. So when I say to people, try one day, try to jog, try another day to do uh, a hit training on YouTube or, you know, or next day, try, yoga there's always you have to try a lot of things to know what you like and also what you don't like and that's where you begin and then you have to be you have to make that commitment to yourself that you're going to do it and that there's nobody there's no there's no guru out there alive that can make someone do something they don't want to do so you got to find it within why you want to do it what's your why are you doing it for energy are you doing it for for focus? Are you doing it because you know this is going to be your path, just your, 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 your starting step and path to much more other, uh, you know, other really positive, healthy habits that you're going to be doing? I mean, you got to figure that out. And that's how you start. How do you do it? Um, look, my, my audience is mostly male. Uh, but no one's busier than a, than a, 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 a mom. <laughs> Yeah, tell me about it. Exactly. No, no, no one's busier because you have uh, your child's needs and then you also have your husband, you know, who, who, you know, has needs and you have like, you know, there's a lot of pressure on uh, a married woman with children. So um, for all you fellas out there listening, um, if they can do it, we can do it. So no, it's how do you... true. the reality yeah. is, it's, you know, there's, there's a saying they say, if you, if you want something done, you give it to a busy person because it is so true. Right. And again, I go back to momentum, right? A, 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 an object in motion stays in motion. It is super, super important to have. That's why action and motion is so important to me. I also think you have non-negotiables in life, right? One of my non-negotiables is I am going to work out every single day. That's a non-negotiable. And you have to, you, you, you create workarounds to make that happen because right. that, Go ahead, that? finish, finish. No, ahead, I'll ask after. to make that happen. And you schedule those things. Just how you would schedule, people have enough time to blow dry their hair and brush their teeth and do this. They have time to work out. There's, it should be part of the, I mean, listen, this is not even a podcast on working out. I'm just saying like, right. to me, that to me is a, a, a fundamental habit, a, a core habit that leads to so much other success down the road but if you if you can if you can nail that in to, to a, in a real way as as in, in a regular way 
it it basically dominoes into all these other things. What are your other non-negotiables? Uh, another non-negotiable for me is, um, first of all, like I, like I, my, another one is like, I I'm with my kids in the morning. So I wake up with my kids. I, uh, make them breakfast I make them their lunch, go to school. That's a non-negotiable. So I don't, I don't schedule anything, uh, meeting wise or otherwise until 10 or 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay. Okay. I find that another, that's a big one. Um, What's another non-negotiable? I think the exercise is a really big one for me. And my kids in the morning time is a very big one for me. Everything else is very malleable. I don't love, and I think people get can, can get really, especially, you know, post COVID, during COVID, we got very used to these long as Zoom meetings, which I find to be a lot of wasted time. You know, like we used to have something called a telephone call where you can call somebody. Now people don't do that. They don't want to make Why? It. Why? Why has this gone away? It drives me fucking insane. It I hate it. Insane. It's like, I don't understand. Like, I will literally now say to people on email, I'm like, please do not, I will not, please do not schedule a Zoom call. This could be a conference call. And the reason why uh, I don't love the Zoom calls, number one, I don't need to be staring at somebody's face to be talking to them or staring at my own face. I find that to be also... Uh, not not great for that's that's a whole other conversation okay i also find like why why not walk a great way to kind of kill two birds with one stone is have a call and walk around your neighborhood i like the calls because i can like walk and talk gets the blood flowing and gets the juices flowing your brain works way better when you're actually moving so being sedentary for hours on end we talk all about like being a, obesity being a problem and sedentary being being a problem and yet we keep on scheduling more and more of these zoom calls like i just like the in person better personally i i like to too. talk to you i like to I, I i i don't know what it is like my company uses something called boxer and it's very important and i get it and i like it you know and i like it but like i don't want to have friendship talk over boxer i don't like friendship talk over boxer yes, i want I mean, yeah like who has I, all these things I, my friends, some, a bunch of my friends do, and I get so mad and I, I, I get mad at them and they like, so like our friendship has dissipated a little bit, but just be, you know, like we still yeah, love each totally. other, but like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to like converse over Voxer. I want to talk to you like a real fucking person. I know. You know? I, I, th I think I'm like old school where I actually yeah. pick up my phone and dial numbers and call people and people are so thrown off by that. Right. Like, most of the time, like they're like, uh, they, when, if they answer, because most of the time it goes right <laughs> to the voicemail and right. I get a text. But if they answer, they're like, uh, hello. Yeah. Like, and by the way, with business people all the time too, like I get all these like very, you know, formalized business emails. And I'm like, it go the back and forth of the email to me can be very, it, it can also like drag things out longer. Like pick up the phone and call people. Just call. We can, we can handle this in five minutes. In five minutes. Right. Rather than 10 emails. This, no. this could be five minutes. It's drawn over like two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes. Just, that's like, five. Let's I just, agree. Like, pick up your phone and, and like, uh, and also you're like training your brain to like know how to like like socialize and talk to people and build connections and relationships. You can only go so far on the computer. I'm yep. sorry. I and agree. This is why, and this is why like dating in my opinion has gotten so crazy difficult with like Tinder and everything, because all people are used to just swipe, 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 swipe. So there's no, there's no like human. It's all dope. Well, you don't get you, dopamine hits. And then you don't like with the whole dating thing. I don't know. I want, I, I want to like risk not liking you. And I want to be on a bad date for an hour and I want to risk you not liking me. And that's just part of it. Like you don't even really go out on a date with people anymore. You first, you have like a mini date of like 10 minutes. Uh, like, well, with a, well I, I actually think what also happens, I agree with you, but also what I think happens is that even if you went on the date, all you're thinking about is who's better that I can swipe left to. So you're not even trying to make a connection because you're, you're so programmed now. Mm -hmm. to, to only visually date somebody, your brain is, is so dopamine dependent on the swipe. Mm. And what you see in a picture sometimes isn't reality. So then when you get to reality, you're naturally going to be disappointed because that the, in real life, things aren't Photoshopped and you can't lie. 
You can't double. catfish. You get catfish. Right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Have you seen the Tinder Swindler? Of course I did. Oh my God. That's like that. Crazy. It's crazy. And like what drives me, I mean, I, this is not even on topic, but whatever. Uh, what drove yeah. me crazy about it was you're not, she's not, they're not, she's not a victim. Like no. girl, girl, you took out $250,000 of loans and gave it to somebody who you knew for one month, one month. Okay. Like, by the way, you know, how often this happens a lot. Yeah. It wasn't just people are so fascinated by that Tindler swindler, uh, episode, mm -hmm. uh thing. that happens. Do you know that that happens on LinkedIn? Like it's a massive problem on LinkedIn because guys are going to LinkedIn and they're, they're, they're reaching out to successful girls pretending that there's some like major success. I mean, well, they're, no, they're a nobody, let's say they have no jobs and they're just con artists and they're able to like, they're so, they like, they, they, I think they prey on people who are lonely. But how did ooh. they figure out who's lonely? Right. And then they create this whole romantic dream in these girls, in a lot of these women's minds. And then they get them for a lot of money. It happens all the time. Huh. It's a major problem right now. That's really crazy. Yeah. That's really crazy. So yeah, I'm not a fan of the whole online thing either. Like I, I, I like my friends in person. Uh, I like, you know, I do martial arts. I like to touch my friends. Right. I that's how say, you're like, you're like extra, extra even, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have, no, I have too much for me, but yes, you know, that that's just how I roll. Um, look, there's a couple questions that I ask people as they, uh, as we close up the podcast. And, and I, I think I know your answer definitely to the one here. Um, I think everyone has something that that makes them uniquely them and is their power that makes them like amazing in the world that they go give. What, what do you think yours is? What, do you, what has made you amazing? What made me, I, I think what I do have is I am very bold. Um, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem um, based. I don't, I, I don't really have a problem asking somebody exactly for what I want going out, chasing what I want. Um, I, I saying what I want that to me is like, has been a superpower for me. And the truth of the matter is it's something that I've worked on. You can build boldness as a skill, like anything else by practice. Uh, and I think it's been one of my, one of my, you know, um, one of my habits or one of the skills that have kind of really, kind of really kind of curated my, my life. And I would say the other one is curiosity. I think being curious has opened up a lot of opportunities and a lot of doors and I otherwise wouldn't have had just because I was genuinely interested and wanted to know about something. So I learned more about what was even available. So I think those are the two. All right. Last question. Um, you're a busy woman. You got, like we said, you got kids, you got a job, you got family and uh, this podcast ain't moving the needle for you. I, I, I hope, I hope, <laughs> I hope, uh, I hope That's it me. never know, but never okay. know. Right. <laughs> so why take your hour here? And like, you know, look, we had some technical difficulty. Why don't you just say, ah, fuck it. I'm, you know, whatever. So why jump on this podcast with some guy that you don't know? Right. Like, it's not like, you know, I'm famous or anything like that. So what's the point in doing it for you? That's a good, great question. I shouldn't have done it. It was a total waste of my time. No, no I'm joking. Total waste of your time. Uh, because I, 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 I like to, I like to, um, I like to go through life having basically saying yes versus saying no, because that's when opportunities happen. You never know what happens from what, from what door opens from what you do. And in my experience, it's always been the, the, the things that I never thought were, that were, okay, let me put it this way. Whenever I, yeah, I think that's actually true. I always got the most gratification from doing the things that you would never think were the most gratifying versus the things that you would assume that were the most helpful, the most gratifying, the most opportunistic. Like the people who've always come to my world and helped me the most or been really, really um, important and, and, and special have come from the most unobvious ways. And so I like to kind of go through life and, or in this journey of life by saying yes versus no. So if I, if I, if I can, I say yes. Like 
was this the easiest thing for me to schedule? I think you, you canceled. I had to like reschedule something, you know, but over time, it's like, I think if people um, approach you properly and there's an earnest behind it and, and there's something that's similar, why not? I mean, what's the worst that can happen? It doesn't have to be an hour. It could be 40 minutes or 10 minutes if I didn't like it. But look right. what happened. I had, from this conversation, now you, I told you I want to get into Muay Thai. You're, you so happen to be an, an, an expert in your field. You're going to connect me to somebody who can help me with that. So look what that happened. Sure. Yeah. I, I, look, I agree. I just like to hear other people's. Uh, I love Reasons. people. I, yeah, I just love people. That's why I do the podcast. Um, you know, I'd love to, like we were talking about earlier, you know, get a, you know, I'll take 50 million from Spotify. That'll, that'll be fine. I don't need 200 like Joe Rogan, but uh, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, close no, enough. It's, two, it's, it's over 200. Oh, so God. yeah, yeah. It's he's set. making more than you and I are combined times like 10, probably. Yeah. But that's, so, that's what you're hearing right. over there. Right. right. So um, but yeah, so I just like to hear people's reasons, like why they do things. I think, and I think other people need to hear this. Look, everyone's reason that I've ever asked that question to has been around that. Like, like the weirdest things have given me success in my life. And I think some like, uh, young people or people that are stuck, they really get this idea of, man, if I, if I can just meet this person, if I can just, da, 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 exactly and they, and, true. And that's just not true. Right. That, that just isn't true about how any of this world works. And, you know, maybe, maybe it's true in Hollywood or maybe it's true for one person that's worked out that way, but for the majority of successful people, uh, it's these random encounters. Like I met my business partner, uh, his name is Amal, who was my jujitsu teacher first in a mall when I was like, you know, those things that we used to walk through, uh, for all you. Yeah, I, I, I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah. yeah. So I met a mall in a mall and I had no money. And I ended up just cleaning the school and that now, now I'm the co-owner. So that's amazing. Yeah. It's a crazy, crazy story. story, right? It's a crazy yeah. story, but like who would thought, who would, who would think that that would work out? That's, that's just putting yourself out there in places. So just go make random connections, you know, just go talk to people. So that's um, exactly how I look at it. And like I yeah. said, if you're not curious and don't have that kind of that genuine interest i think it's an important thing to kind of cultivate and, and and build because it does open up your world and your opportunities tenfold mm -hmm. you you don't know who you're sitting next to ever never right never so never. all right jen tell everyone where they can uh find you and reach your stuff i know you're 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 i know you're talking about the blk water earlier um, yeah, well, yeah, but people, I mean, this is great. This is, um, I'm going to send you some of this. I think you'll like it. Okay. Um, it's, uh, yeah, this is just like a water that's highly, uh, has a high uh, alkaline and it has a lot of antioxidants. It has fulvic minerals. Do you know what fulvic okay. is? No, what is it? Oh, it's like, it's a, it's an antioxidant that's down in the soil that is very, very good for your, for your recovery and for your uh, detoxification. It's, and so that's why I, I like it. Um, and it comes with flavors or regular, you'd actually love it because you're so athletic and you do a lot of workouts. A lot of people who are workout people and who um, are like health fanatics really love it. Okay, I'll try it. Um, I've seen yeah. it before. I've just never tried it. Yeah, well, right. that will change. Right. Uh, they can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, The Real Jen Cohen. They can listen to my podcast, Habits and Hustle. Uh, yeah, that's what they can find me. Well, thanks for coming on. I appreciate it. Guys, as always. Thanks for having me. Of course. Uh, Jen has her powers. The things that she gives to the world, the thing that she does, the things that she does uniquely well. And I have my power. I have the, you know, same thing. What does what Elliot do and give? Don't go out in the world and try to be Jen and don't go out in the world and try to be Elliot. I want you all to go out there and find your own power.